Howdy y'all, welcome back to Zeman Outdoors. Today is gonna be part one of my heavy arrow build for 2021. For this build, I have two specific arrows picked out. I have the Victory V-Force arrow, and then the same arrow I ended up using last year, which is the Beeman ICS Whiteout. I do have the gold tips and the serious arrows that if I wanted to test out, I could do that if neither of these two work, but I really wanted to focus on these two, primarily because the Beeman ICS is what I used last year, and I wanna see how different of a hand load I have with all the new additions to my bow. And then the V-Force, I've heard a lot of good things about Victory Arrows. They come spine aligned and ready to go. So I'm interested to test these out as well. One thing I talked about in my previous video is I do plan on using the Luminox this year in my testing because I will be hunting with the Luminox. So I wanted to have as accurate as results as possible. If you haven't already purchased your arrows or your Ranch Ferry kit yet, you can go back to my previous video from last year in part one where I show you how I purchased the arrows on SiriusArchery.com. They did raise their prices a little bit, and that's part of the reason why I'm going with the arrows I'm going with this year. I just figured I could buy these off of Lancaster and they'd be a little bit cheaper. So if you don't want to buy the Sirius R3 arrows, you don't have to. You can reach out to Lancaster or you can go somewhere else to buy the arrow shafts that you want. Then you can buy your Ranch Ferry field tips and kit from Ethics Archery, which is what I did the first time I did this hand load as well. So for choosing your spines, I recommend going through the arrow manufacturer's charts and choosing the spine that is correct for you. And then as far as your second spine, I would choose one that is a little bit stiffer. So the next step up, because when you add weight to your arrow, it's gonna weaken your arrow. Therefore, you probably are gonna end up wanting to use that stiffer arrow. So in this case, I have a 300 and 340 in my Beeman arrows and a 300 and 350 in my Victory V-Force arrows. So with these arrows, I do have the stock inserts in there right now, and I have the Ethics Archery Ranch Ferry kit that goes from 100 to 200, and I also have the one that goes from 200 to 300. So I will be testing out all the way from 100 grains to 300 grains. In this video, I will be using my Diamond Infinite Edge Pro bow. Like I mentioned, I got a new sight, a new rest and some new strings. And I'll post links to those videos in my description below if you wanna watch that. My draw length is 27 and a half inches and my draw weight is right around 64 to 65 pounds. Before you get started, you're really gonna to wanna to make sure your bow is in tune, your center shot is set and it's ready to go. Otherwise, you're gonna have lots of issues trying to find your hand load. So what I would do is I'd go to your local bow shop and go ahead and get them to tune it and get it into specs so that's ready to go for you to build your hand load. So this year I have a little bit different of a setup. I redid my paper tuning stand for my archery target here. I wanted something that was a little bit higher so that I could stand up and, and take my shots that way. I took a ton of shots last year if you've watched my videos and I was on my knees and it was just very painful to go through that. And so I wanted to be able to stand up and go through the process while I was standing and still have my target at eye level. Also, one thing you need to notice is I have quite a bit of space here between my target and the paper tuning setup. You wanna make sure your arrow can travel all the way through your paper before it contacts your target. Otherwise, it will change the tear in your paper. Also, one thing last year that I noticed was the ideal distance from the target for me was about five to seven yards. So I'm here set up about five yards from my target and that's where I will be starting my testing for this year. If you don't have a paper tuning target, kind of how I do, you can either make something, there's a lot of videos on YouTube on how to set that up, or you can use a block target or a foam target. I have a video of the Bloodline Buck target that I use for my 3D target. And you could use something like that. The only problems I had with using a foam target and I talked about it a little bit last year, was you could see the angle left and right, which was really good, but you couldn't really see your angle that was up and down. And so that made it kind of difficult. And then another issue that I ran into was I wanted to be able to go back and compare it to my previous set of shots. So say I took 
three shots or four shots with a hundred grain, I couldn't go look at what I did with my other arrow with a hundred grain, unless I took pictures or video or documented it. And with the paper tuning target, I can sit there and just pull the paper down some such that my next set of tears will be right above it and I can label it with a Sharpie. And it's easy to see all the shots you've taken with every arrow. And it's just a lot more precise on showing you what your arrow is doing out of the bow. So all that being said, I'm gonna go ahead and get started and take a couple shots. I'm gonna start with my Beeman ICS wideout arrow at 100 grains. I'll then work my way up to the 300 grain mark. And then I'll start the same process over again with the victory arrows. And then I'll go through and I'll show you my results of each arrow and the tears. And then I'll talk about my next steps and picking my hand load. So we just went through my results from the Beeman ICS wideout as well as the Victory V-Force Arrow. One thing about paper tuning is it can be pretty fickle so I may come back tomorrow or sometime later in the week and try those arrows again. But I'm just kind of starting to gather these thoughts in my head about what arrow could be right for me now and if I'm doing something wrong. So my first thoughts are is my bow in tune? Is the timing correct? Is the center shot correct? And I tend to think that that's not the issue because I just got new strings and I've shot them quite a bit and it just came back from the bow shop and they tested the center shot and the timing and, and made it right. But another thought that's crossing my mind is the arrows seem to be getting better tears as I get heavier, which is making the arrow weaker. So my thought is, am I overspined with the 340 and 350? Or do I need more weight? Do I need to make my arrow a little bit longer? And so these are some of the thoughts crossing my mind. So I have three more arrows here. I have the Beeman ICS wideout that I've used for hunting, where the insert is 175 with the field tip of 125. And I'll test this because I know this arrow worked my bow last year. So I wanna test that as kind of a control group. And then I have a gold tip 340 that I was gonna test out and I'll probably go through um, starting at 300 and coming down to see how the bullet holes work there. I'm not gonna test my 300 spine in this gold tip because my feeling right now is that I'm overspined and I think that 300 would be too stiff. And then here I have the first arrows I ever bought with my bow. They're a 400 spine. It's a storm arrow. I don't even know who makes it necessarily. Um, but I figured take the fletchings off one of those and try and shoot that through paper as well. And again, I'll start at 100 and work my way up to 300 on this one and kind of just see what these three arrows do because I'm really curious if it's something I'm doing, if it's something with the bow, or if it's something with my arrow. And at this point, I can't really rule anything out, so that's kind of what I'm going to try and do here. All right, guys, so I've shot these three arrows now and I'll put up the results as I talk about them. So I first shot my hunting arrow from last year and the results were pretty similar to what I was seeing on the other Beeman arrows as well as the Victory arrows. And so I shot it about six or seven times and got pretty much the exact same results. Then I shot this Gold Tip Hunter 340 with the standard knock in it and 300 grain insert. And I was getting about a half inch to inch tear just straight low 
So I may try and shoot a little bit more with this and see what I can do. I may drop to 275 or 250 as well and see what kind of results that gives me. And then interestingly enough, this 400 spine storm, my first two shots were just dead bullet holes. And then the last two had a slight tear on them, but it was pretty interesting to see that the 400 was a bullet hole, which kind of makes me think that my 340s are still a little stiff. And so what I may do after I do a little bit more testing here is I may go back and buy either a Victory or a Beeman in a little bit longer, maybe go one inch longer and see if that helps. And then I may also buy a 400 spine at the same length I've been using and see how well that arrow does as well. But I'm gonna do a little bit more tinkering with these three arrows that I have here and then I'll make a decision on what I wanna buy and test next because I'm pretty sure my bow is set up correctly and it's in center shot and it's tuned. So that's what's making me think it's either me, which I don't think I'm changing my grip or anything across all these shots, or it's the arrow, which seeing the result I've been getting, that's kind of what I'm leaning towards. So I'm gonna keep testing and I will bring you all along in this process. Also, one thing to note is I've probably shot 200 plus shots today, so I could be getting tired and there's no doubt I feel tired. So I'm also going to check some of these results tomorrow or over the next couple of days just to make sure I'm getting the same results that I am today before I go buy any more arrows or do any more testing because I just don't want me being tired to affect how my hand load comes out. All right, guys, I'm back at it today. I shot a little bit yesterday and pretty much had the same results where I felt like I was very overspined. And I was about to buy a 400 spine arrow and a longer 350 spine arrow. But I talked to Nate with Average Jack Archery and he really helped me out on this. I gave him a call and we kind of walked through what I was experiencing. And given my setup, at 65 pounds and 27 and a half inch draw length, I shouldn't be even close to needing a 400 spine arrow. And so he talked me through a couple things. We checked that the rest was aligned correctly, that it was 13 16 away from the riser, and that was pretty good to go. I may move it a tad because it was a little bit off, but I wanted to do a few more shots, changing up a couple other things first. His biggest concern was not as much about the arrow, but more about the bow or me. And given we looked at the rest and we think the timing's good and it just came back from the shop, I've got new strings and everything, we're leaning a little bit more towards my grip and how I was shooting. If you haven't checked out Nate's video on grip and grip torque, I'll put a link in the description below for you to check that out. It's pretty helpful, pretty interesting how much your grip can actually change things. One other thing he suggested is he said to come in to about eight feet. I was out at about 15 feet or about seven yards or so. And so I've brought my stand in and I'm about seven to eight feet away from my target now. And his point of that was typically around eight feet or a little bit less, your fletchings are gonna completely take over your arrow. So really just making sure it's perfect out of the bow is what you really wanna do. So that's my goal today is I am going to take both these arrows. This is the Victory V-Force 350 here and then my Beeman ICS Wideout 340. I have a 200 grain up front and I'm just going to mess with my grip today and try and pull that arrow back into closer to a bullet hole. And once I get an idea of where my grip really should be on this bow, and how to shoot it, then I may go back through and check different weights and see if one shoots better than the other. But I know based on the Victory Arrow calculator that 200 up front with this arrow should be exactly what I need. And so that's why I really should be able to use this arrow and get pretty close to a bullet hole. So I don't know if you can see those there, but they're actually much better already. And I've only adjusted my grip a little bit So I've already taken about eight shots and I think I've pretty much figured out 
my grip issues that I was having because, and I'll show you a picture of this, but I'm getting pretty good shots here. I mean, I had a couple that were about a one inch tear or so, and then it got a little bit better. And then I even backed up to this eight yards I was at and I was getting even much better tears than I was the other day as well. So these were the first two shots I took trying to adjust my grip a little bit. And then I took two more and then I backed up some and I didn't really fully adjust my grip. And that's what these two were a little to the right. And then I stayed back at the eight yards and I got these two and I made sure my grip was pretty close. So you can see that even backing up, I was getting much better. So I'm still gonna stick to shooting from probably the eight to 10 foot range. But now that I can tell I'm already getting a much better tear with this new grip that I'm using, I'm gonna go ahead and start rolling through some of the different weights. And I don't think I'm gonna start at the 100 range. I'm probably gonna start around like 175, 200, and work my way up to the 300 grain range. Because that's really ideally what I wanna be around is somewhere between that 200 and 300 grain up front. So I've shot from 200 to 300 grains in both of these arrows here. And honestly, both of them are looking pretty solid. I do think the Beeman ICS may be a little bit more forgiving, um, but I'm gonna back up a little bit. I'm just kinda curious how these will shoot at say 10 yards or so and see if I can tell further back which one's flying at a longer distance. So I'm gonna do a little bit more testing, but actually I'm very happy with both these. And I can't thank Nate with Average Jack Archery enough for kind of just helping me out and let me know that it's probably a me issue and uh, helping work with my grip a little bit. And I think I've kind of tweaked it enough to where I should be pretty good to go for picking out my hand load and getting this process started. I just wanted to thank y'all for watching today. I know this was a little long-winded for this process, but if you found this video helpful and you've had similar issues, please hit that like button. I would greatly appreciate it. In the next video, part two, I'm gonna talk about which arrow I chose. I'm gonna talk about the inserts I'm using, clocking the arrow, spine aligning the arrow. I'm gonna go a little bit into the fletching choice that I'm gonna use for this year's arrow and I will start putting together and building these arrows as well. So based on this picture of my paper tears for these two arrows and all these different weights, drop a, a comment in the section below on which arrow and weight you would use if this was your tears. Thanks for watching guys.